Hey you guys, welcome back. Today's video is all about the testing that my children had to do. This week was our first week, we completed it. We're done. I will go into detail and tell you about the map testing. I will even give you some examples and show you a few screenshots of what I'm talking about. So stay tuned. Okay, so I totally filmed this video before. I don't know what happened. So <laughs> this is the refilm, so bear with me. Georgia Cyber Academy uses MAP testing and the iReady testing. And they do the iReady testing before school starts. Usually they give you about a 21 day block to complete. However, we had scheduling issues, so we did not take the iReady test. We were told that we were gonna have to take the iReady test the first week of school along with the MAP test, which sounded crazy to us because the MAP test is so long and it's just, the kids are coming right off of summer break. They're not in testing mode anyway. And so we actually did not take the iReady test. They told us that the MAP test will be sufficient and they'll use those grades in order to figure out where they're gonna put the girls in what class. Um, apparently they're both adaptive. And so adaptive meaning that once you click one answer, if you get that right, you, the next question is harder. If you get that wrong, the next question is a little easier. And so they just really wanna see where you stand within the metrics that they have there. MAP stands for Measures of Academic Progress. And so as it says from the name, it's measuring where you are within your progress. So they do it actually a few times throughout the year. So you'll be able to see where you were basically, where you've gone, where you need to go, all that good stuff. And it's not something that's specific to Georgia Cyber Academy or specific to online schools or specific to charter schools because it's just a third party program that these teachers are using that will they can test through and it gives them reports and you can download the reports. It's something that's accessible to a lot of schools and so a lot of states are using the same type of testing. So it's a good because if you're moving your test and your scores will transfer with you most likely to whatever state you go to. The way they come up with the questions for the MAP test is that they take, they take the grade above and the grade below your child to see where they actually land on the scale. My child is going to the second grade, so they had some first grade questions, second grade questions, and third grade questions on there. And my first grader, there were kindergarten questions on there, first grade questions, and second grade questions in order to see how much she really knows. So whatever grade it is that you're testing for, just know that it's gonna be the grade below and the grade above. It usually takes about an hour or more to complete these tests. They are not time tests, and so that's a good thing. The breakdown of the MAP test is that Monday is reading, Tuesday is reading fluency, Wednesday is math. Now those three tests, my kids knocked those out the park. I was so excited and so happy. They kept scoring at the higher percentile. They give you a range there, and they let you know right away what your scores were. It was awesome. By Thursday, with the science test, we had to read them the questions. We had to actually read them the questions and read them the answers and sit there and watch our children choose the wrong answer. <laughs> it was so hard. It's so hard because you can't even like change your facial expression. You can't even change the pitch or the inflection of your voice. Like, really? Are you, you sure? Sure you want to pick that? You can't do any of that stuff. And these are questions that you know they know. It's like you know your children know the questions, at least for the science test. And it's hard because you know if you just reword the question slightly different, they would totally get it, but you can't do that. You can't affect the test in any type of way. So Thursday was hard sitting there <laughs> listening to your children. My kids, at, at one point, one of them was like, I'm gonna pick three because I like three. <laughs> And the other one was, you know, they just were picking numbers. And they're like, this one sounds good. This one sounds easy. And a quick tip about that, if you're starting later on in the school year, they didn't tell us that we could read the questions to them. We went in and saw the science test and was like, what in the world? And I had to go back into the chat box and ask the teacher. I said, um, am I able to read the questions and to read the answers to them and explain the test to them? Because they can't even say these words. Like, I'm gonna post one of the questions here from the science test. The science test was crazy. The social studies test, I'm gonna talk about that. Social studies was today. But the science test, they didn't even know, understand the words and so the teachers had to say, yes, you can read them the questions. And I was like, okay, because they, if not, they're just gonna sit there and just click through and just, they can be done this test in three minutes if you want. Miles. They don't know words. <laughs> so they can just go through and click the letters. So you do have to ask the teacher, double verify with the teacher, but just know that you can read them the questions. You can't read it, you can't say anything during Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday because those are completely independent. The kids should know all of that. 
but by the time Thursday comes around for the science test, you will be reading your children the test if you have younger grades. Moving on with the test, today's test was social studies. Today's test was very hard as well. Unfortunately, we weren't able to read the questions to the second grader and explain the questions to the second grader, and so we just had her put her headphones on so we didn't even wanna know what was going on and just let her crash and burn by herself. <laughs> no, not really, but she just was sitting there for a long time like, this is hard, I don't know these words. What are these words? What does this mean? I don't know how to spell this. Who did this? <laughs> so she just was complaining all morning. But the first grader, we were able to read her the questions and explain and the answers. Uh, the social studies questions were ridiculous. There were about 15 to 17 questions that I couldn't confidently answer myself. And they were so long and long-winded. And you know, uh, one thing with children, it's, 80 day, it's attention span. What was Lewis and Clark and Sacagawea's most important contribution to the development of America? Exploring Canada to see if it was a land that the United States wanted to purchase. B, exploring the Louisiana Territory land. Some knew nothing about what the land was like or what people and animals lived there. Or C, crea creating new cities in the New England area to extend the United States territory. Um. Sorry. Do you need to hear it again? Yeah. Of course you do. Thomas Jefferson and Ben Franklin showed positive character traits such as perseverance, I can't even say the word, courage, commitment, and equality. Which sentence below shows commitment? Sean left his dog at the park all alone. Sean saw that his dog was sick and he, sick and he never left his dog's side. Sean did not clean his room and when his mom, eat, when his mom told him to do so. You, I couldn't keep her attention reading the whole long question. She started zoning out. By the time I started explaining the answer, she already forgot the question and she just was looking at me like, do what now? Brother! Pop the balloon with the glass. Brother! Pop it with the glass, the glass in your head. Brother! It's a family trait. Looking online, there's a lot of praise, there's a lot of criticism. It's really just gonna depend on your experience, but just know that it's not something that goes towards the child's final grade. It's just something to see where they're gonna place the child currently. And if the child can sign up for any extra courses like Spanish or art or things like that. And so thanks for joining me today. I hope this is helpful to you guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. And I'll see you on my next video.